Hey guys, this is Felix from Desktop Studio and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a new farm and also more importantly create a new virtual machine inside this farm, inside Desktop Studio. So we are already logged into the Desktop Studio app and I'm inside the Desktop Studio tenant here because I as Felix at desktop.studio am part of this tenant. If I go to the upper right corner and I go over this little plus here, it says new workplace, which will create a new workplace for me. I have three options generally. We will look into the other two options in other videos, but what I want to do is just create an empty farm at the moment. Click on to next and then I have to specify the farm details. I'll have to name the farm. In this case we'll just name, name it uh, Felix farm. Why not? Um, we can add a farm description. Totally optional. We don't have to do that. Uh, afterwards we can choose the default system language which will determine the um, language of the image of Windows, for example, or other operating systems, which will be loaded onto our virtual machines. We see we have a bunch of options here, French, English. Um, I will stick with English Switzerland for this form here. Afterwards, we choose the default time zone. We have all the time zones available. Uh, UTC plus one, Amsterdam is fine for me. Next, we can set the default shutdown timers, which will be selected for all virtual machines, which will be created inside of this new farm. Um, here, default uh, shutdown timer, if no user is online, uh, 10 minutes is fine. And yeah, default shutdown timer, if only disconnected users are online, 30 minutes. Yeah, that's also fine. So this will basically save me money if I have my VMs running and no one is using them, they will be automatically shut down. Uh, last, I have to select a location. If you have other locations available for your specific tenants, they will show up here. For our desktop studio tenant, we have only West Europe available, which is why I can only choose this. Then I press create and it will create this new and empty form. As you can see here inside the desktop studio tenant, now this new farm called Felix farm has been created. And if I go inside, I cannot see any virtual machines. As we mentioned before, this has been an empty farm, which we just created. If I want to create a virtual machine inside this farm, I again go over this little plus here in the upper right corner where it says new resource. If I press this plus, I have again three options. We will go over the other two options in other videos, but what I want to do now is just create a virtual machine. Uh, the first thing it asks me if I want to create a Windows or a Linux machine. For the standard case, uh, we will just choose Windows and I could skip this um, part here but what I can already do here is add all the applications I want to have installed on this virtual machine. If I click on add applications, I'll see a list of all applications which are available inside of Desktop Studio at the moment. Um, what I want to do is uh, set up uh, a normal workplace where I will have Office 365 selected. You see if I select an application, it asks me all the settings I have to put down for this application. These can also be selected generally for a tenant, but in this case we have not done that, so I need to choose the language I want to have Office 365 deployed. I want to have it in English in my case now. So let's click install application and you see applications to install has added Office 365. Let's um, just create like a default workplace for, for example, an architect where we add, let's say Revit 2020 to the list. 
you see again all the options I have to select for the Revit install. Which language do I want? Yeah, let's go with English GB. Country, I'm in Switzerland. And I want to do user-based licensing, in which case I don't have to add a serial number or a product key or a license server. So if we press install applications, Revit 2020 will be added to our list of applications to install. Um, let's go one further where we add, I mean, Adobe Acrobat Reader is always a nice thing to have. There are no options, so it automatically uh, adds this application without me having to select anything else. And let's put down another Revit plugin. Let's go for BCF Manager 2020 as a Revit plugin. Uh, if I would have selected BCF Manager uh, before I install Revit 2020, it would have also told me that I need to install Revit 2020 first. BCF Manager only, the language can be chosen. Again, let's choose English for this setup. So I have now a list of all my application which I want to have installed on this virtual machine. So I click Next. Now we come onto the screen where we actually select which kind of virtual machine we want to deploy. And the first thing it shows me is a bunch of recommendations just to make things easier because there are so many VMs to choose from ultimately. Um, the first thing we see is these two with or these three VMs with high recommendations, but we see we can only select two of the three star virtual machines and one of the machines, which is the NV8 AS V4 is grayed out. Why is it grayed out? If we click onto this machine, we can see availability, unfortunately not available. Please contact your administrator. This usually means that you don't have any quota for this specific machine on your tenant and your administrator would have to apply for quota with Microsoft Azure if you would like to deploy this machine. If we select a machine which we actually uh, could select and we see availability, we go over this availability bar and it shows us quota used. We have already 36 uh, cores used inside the quota of this specific machine type, but our quota limit is 576, which means we have many more cores we can use. This is a six core machine. So yeah, using this uh, is no problem within the availability of our quota. These are just the recommendations. And what we can also see here is the price per hour this virtual machine is going to cost us. For example, the NV6 promo machine would cost us 80 uh, US dollar cents per hour running. What we can also choose is if you don't want to use your machine just for one person, if you want to have more than one user on this machine, you have this a uh, handy little bar up here where you can choose how many users should be able to work simultaneously. Standard is one, but we can, let's say we go up. We choose one, two or three users and we see the recommendations automatically change. The three star machines which have been suggested before, some of them have disappeared because we don't recommend having three users at once simultaneously working on them because they are too small. They don't have enough power for that. And other VMs become recommended now. Let's look at the NV12 S V3 series where we see we have 12 Intel cores, which is a much more powerful machine and it would actually manage for three Revit users to work simultaneously. Uh, this thing is pretty smart because it also takes into account the applications we chose before. Uh, so if you choose applications which are not, for example, GPU heavy, then you will have machines recommended which do not have a graphics card because they are just simply cheaper if you don't actually need a graphics card, obviously. If you have uh, applications which don't need a lot of CPU power, you will automatically get recommended machines which have not as much CPU power because you don't actually need it and you can save some money that way. But if you have 
applications like Revit, for example, which I chose, which just need a lot of G uh, CPU power and GPU power, automatically this will be taken into consideration in these recommendations. We can also just, if you don't want to take our recommendations, no problem. You can just click onto all up here and you will be shown all available VMs, virtual machines. If we go down here, we can see in total we have 207 different virtual machines available for our region, for our tenant. Um, no, not actually for our tenant because these would be grayed out here, but for our region we have them available. And we can search through them, for example, by VM name. If we want to find the NV6 again, for example, we just type in NV6 and you see it shows me my NV6 VM again. Or we also have some filters here if we go into advanced search where we can uh, search by minimum number of CPU cores, maximum number of CPU cores. We can choose the type of graphics card we want here. We can choose by Azure family name. A lot of other filters we can use. Let's, for example, let's be silly here and, and look for a machine with 400 CPU cores minimum. And we see it actually shows us two types of machines which actually have more than 400 cores. So, for example, the MSV2 series, which is a massive machine with 416 Intel cores, would cost 64 US dollars per uh, price per hour. So it's it's just you see you can really go into detail here and look through these 207 different <laughs> options. Um, anyway, what? But we are going to keep it simple. We go back to proposed and we just go down to one user again and we choose our NV6 VM. So. We have selected the VM type we want to deploy and now the only thing left to do is give it a name. Let's call it uh, Felix VM, why not? Or one, maybe we want to deploy another one, so let's put a number there. And we can also choose the operating system now. Uh, we have chosen Windows applications already before, which means it only gives us Windows as an option to choose from. We can uh, I have chosen to only go for one uh, user on this machine at a time at the moment, so it would be fine to choose Windows 10 single user custom language. We could also use Windows 10 multi-user custom language, which would mean that we can have several users simultaneously on this virtual machine. Just be aware if you choose single user, you cannot have different users at the same time on the machine. You could even choose to do a server VM here with Windows Server 2016 or Windows Server 2019. There's a last option we have here is to add some additional uh, disk space. Standard is, um, I think it's about 200, 256 gigabytes of storage, which we usually have on these VMs. If you want any additional space, you can choose that down here and it also shows you the speed you get with this additional disk depending on the size of the disk you choose. But we don't need that for this moment. So we're finished with the setup of our virtual machine and we just press create. It says initiation create, uh, initiating creation of resources. Takes a moment obviously, but uh, as soon as this process is done, the virtual machine will show up. Here it's showing up already. We are in Felix Farm. We have Felix VM number one, which is now showing up. And you see the status of the VM is adding. Now it goes through all the installation processes of the operation system. And it will also, as we see here under Manage Applications, all applications I have chosen prior are now on status to install. And they will be all automatically installed during the setup of this virtual machine. Depending on how long, uh, how many apps you have chosen and so on, usually it takes about 20 minutes, half an hour to set up a new machine. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.